All right, good uh, good morning to everybody. We're playing more of this deck. This deck's got kind of a weird history where I've been very interested in Ranger Captain decks for a little while now. Ranger Captain is uh, a card that I think has a lot of potential in the format since it grabs, you know, Ragavan and Esper Sentinel, two of the strongest one mana cards in the format. Uh, I feel like these, like, Cards kind of generally work together well in a Boros Space proactive deck. Um, and so we started to put this together on stream, also playing Fervent Champion, which is really even maybe the strongest of these one drops in the deck. Um, where Fervent Champion is so, so strong with swords, specifically Sword of Fire and Ice. You're not thinking Twitch Prime. I know that's the, when everybody looks at three Sword of Fire and Ice. Ah! But Fervent Champion is really, really strong with this card. And they, they, they curve into each other really well, too, right? Where it's like, you play this card in turn one or two, then you play Sword of Fire Ice, equip for zero mana, hit him. But um, I, I find like more often, like it, it, like because you have Ranger Captain, you basically have eight Fervent Champions. So a lot of times you're playing either Sword or Captain on turn three, and then on turn four you just play Sword plus Champion, and all in one turn get to connect. I uh, Gear Docs, Gear Twitch Prime, Magic with the five months, Smart with the seven. Thank you guys. Uh, but what I think is really interesting is like I've seen other people try to build these style of decks in the past. But they'll usually play like a sort of light shadow and a sort of feasted fib and main and like the the reality is sort of fire dice is just so much stronger than all the other ones. Especially with the fervent champion just kind of like trying to snowball, get that da get that damage going. Fire ice is just it's just the best sword. <laughs> um it's and I, I think if you're gonna naturally draw one, you really want it to be this one. So I think you just wanna uh, kind of you know max max out on these. Um, rather than play like a lot of different like Stoneforge Mystic Tutor targets. If that makes sense, because you only have four Stoneforge Mystics. And Stoneforge is going to be pretty good, you know, pretty regardless. It's not like you just have infinite tutors to play all these different equipments. Uh, Ryan the Mine, Katoon Gifted Sub, thank you for that. Spirit Walker, the 14 months, thank you guys. So, uh, yesterday I trophied with the stack. I played the trophy match on stream. We actually played against, uh, Menino Ne, uh, who's playing Living It. It was a really, really tense match when we got there. And I played one more league yesterday. Uh, after that, um, with this deck again, I lost playing for the trophy against Belcher. But uh, I was nine and one with this deck yesterday, which is you know at least good enough for us to play a little bit of it up to downstream, huh? <laughs> Answer it. I mean, very cool, very cool card to find. Very obscure. Please play around man league. I'll try. Charmall can help versus Tron. Uh, I mean, we have the four bandit blood moon, so I don't know that we need to. But yeah, Charmall is the best card in the matchup. Yeah, it, it is a good good find. Uh, call me a false hope only prevents combat damage, right? Yeah. It that was it was a good find though. That was a good find. When I'm revisiting Fiddlebender, yeah, I, I do still like the archetype. <laughs> yeah, we need mana tides. <coughs> Prevent Hallmark the Wanderer. Well, the Wanderer does just takes that first activation, right? Well, my opponent's playing Luris. They played Saga on turn one. That's really uncommon for Hammer Time to play Saga on turn one without a, a Springleaf drum. No, not a, a, well, Luris Amulet. Hmm, <laughs> the Luris Amulet brew. Cut the prime times, they get solituded. Genius Smith, huh? I guess I'll ending the smith. I don't love it here though. Springleaf drum. I played this matchup yesterday, it felt pretty good. As for Sentinel, maybe not the strongest against him though. 
It also seems like the draw is like slower and grindier, which, you know, Solitude is worse against the slower, grindier draws rather than the uh, all in on hammer draws. That being said, we did just add four deflecting or three deflecting palms to our sideboard, so I do think we even improved the matchup further. All right, floating a mana, playing a saga. Cast Paladin, floating a, floating a colorless. I imagine they're going to cast a hammer. Okay. I wonder if they didn't cast a hammer there because we would have drawn a card off Sentinel. This saga's going to be a big problem, though. Please cast your dumb hammer. Shadow Spear, even better. <laughs> or maybe not, actually. Give me cards, give me cards, give me cards. Give me cards. Calway with the six months, appreciate ya. I can't believe they let me draw two cards there. It's so freaking greedy. <laughs> it's like ridiculously greedy. Could be waiting to play Sigarda's Aid first. Could be, yeah. It wasn't the case, though. Yeah. Yeah, my opponent's like, I do not want Constructs. Urza Saga is unfair. It's unbalanced, even. Uh, I'm just not going to play with the Constructs. Okay, so... I probably Stoneforge Mystic for Sword of Fire and Ice to keep them all to pitch to the Solitude. Uh, I, I, um, I might play some Black Red, 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 Black Red later today. I did trophy with it over the weekend, but I'm pretty excited about this deck. I'll probably be playing it for a little while. Has Maul been a good... I like Maul. The flying is really relevant. It's Maul is good with, uh, Esper Sentinel and Ragavan. Um, it is a white card to pitch to Solitude. So, like, some, sometimes you're in this spot where you're, like, like, you have a Solitude in your hand and you have an equipment and, like... Like, you naturally drew an equipment for Stone Forge. You have Solitude, so you just want to get a white card to pitch to Solitude. What if we started Ghost Quartering Belcher? I mean, I think it's just a bit too... Like, I would play Cleansing Wildfire instead, but... It's a lot of slots, right? Again, no token for my opponent. I was maybe supposed to try to let them equip the Shadow Spear. Letting them gain an extra 10 life is kind of a lot, though. But it was maybe better against this. Alright, so I need to draw an answer. I've already used both Prismatic Endings, though, and two Solitudes, so... I don't exactly have a lot of answers left. At one point, you said you didn't want to play decks with a bad living good matchup. Yeah, but this deck is a fine living good matchup. I'm like 3-1 and one against it, I think. No. No, 3-0. Oh. Have you ever played against Menino Ne? Yeah, I have. I actually played against him for a trophy on stream yesterday. That's pretty, pretty intense. All right. You got another hammer? Nope. They do have another Paladin, though. Uh, I won. I won. I was playing this deck. It was a really, really intense game three. Although I, I've lost him before. We've, we've actually, we, I've probably played against him like seven or eight times this season. I do get a lot of cyber cards. So I don't, I don't think I want the full four copies of Blood Moon in this matchup. Usually I want to trim at least one, probably more. I'm not a big fan of Sinstool in this matchup. It can be good, but I think, like it's like it sits in play for a long time in, in most games, in my experience. Let's see, I have three cuts to make. I probably trim Ragavan too. We cut the fourth Sophie. I think I want three Blood Moons. Yeah, I guess I'll cut the Maul. If I'm cutting the Sentinels and Ragavan, Maul's not as good. Is Ragavan bad? I, I think Ragavan is 
Oh, I guess I'm on the play too. Maybe I actually want more. Hold on. Um, Ragavan is better against against Hammer than most people think it is. Ragavan gets a really bad rap in, against Hammer time, but like you're usually pretty happy to like trade it for Sentinel on the play, especially it does usually connect if you have a removal spell. Cut Cauldra. No, I think Cauldra's fine. Like Cauldra, Cauldra's good against Hammer since like it, it just it just wins the Hammer time combat, right? No, I like culture against them. Trading Ragavan for Midmite feels bad. Yeah, but that's 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 the lowest case scenario for Ragavan is when you trade it for Midmite. But like like also when you trade one for one against Hammer, that's almost always a good exchange for you because like they are a synergy based deck that needs their cards in like a higher density to function, and so like you you usually are happy to trade one for one with Hammer, anyways. But, like, here if my opponent has Midmite, I have Prismatic Ending and I get to hit them with Ragavan. Looks like they're Prismatic Ending my Ragavan. That's, this is a good trade for me, too. E they, even had, they even had double Midmite, <laughs> and they still they still decided to Prismatic Ending. Which is a bit weird, to be honest. I could maybe cast the Giant Killer here. Better Skull's, like, worst, worst draw in the deck. Hopefully the Palm is good here. Yeah, yeah, trading with Esper Sentinel, I agree, is like is super important. Okay, I think I'm gonna try to deflecting palm them. Mm, Put a missing land drops. So I am too though. Could sack my um, Sun Bay Canyon looking for a land. Let's get the giant killer down. A one two to block my opponent's one ones. This is what modern's all about. <laughs> Brick walled. Porno with kind of a loosey goosey keep, I think. I think I should probably prismatic ending the cigar to Zayn. Yeah, I think they definitely have Stoneforge. And so it's like next turn if they play Stoneforge Mystic, it just gets so awkward. Okay, this is I think a good outcome for me. I think I'm just ending the other Midmite. Fuse wear tear and then ending the hammer. Well, we didn't know. I didn't. I wasn't under the impression that they had a hammer in their hand. Because I feel like I, I, I'd be like, I, I'm surprised that they had a hammer in their hand. Because they, like, they had many opportunities to jam, but they didn't. They declined to jam. They missed on the Insignia Smith. That is one nice thing about wear tear in this deck is it pitches to fury and solitude. Why do we exile the Midmite instead of the Hammer? Um, I've honestly kind of been in a bad habit of doing that because I play a lot of decks that are like really heavy on creature removal. And so because I play so many decks like Shadow, Rakdos, Murktide to some extent, I'm like really, I'm like really used to um, just killing the creatures instead of the Hammer. But uh, that is, I think, I think I, 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 I agree. I think I do it too often. A weird game. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. Thank you, Florent. Glad you liked the stream. Do they receive damage through Palm and Ink Moth? Yeah, it's, it's the Palm that's dealing the damage, not the Ink Moth. But they, they, it doesn't deal infect damage. It deals regular damage. We're gonna tap the smith with the giant killer here. They grab a shadow spear. And then 
Do I sack the canyon? I think... I guess I guess I will cast the Cauldra if I draw the land since I have the white card for Solitude, so I'm gonna not crack the canyon yet. Could tap the Stoneforge Mystic Dash the Ragavan. I think I'll just cast the Ragavan, hold up Giant Killer slash Hardcast Solitude slash Bomb. I'd be good to just win this game without showing them the palm to you. Does it redirect the power of the moth as damage? It does, yeah, but it's it, again it redirects as like regular damage, not infect damage. We have to exile that uh, paladin. <coughs> if they attack with four four smith, I think I'll trade the germ token for it. So let's go fervent champion, equip on the champion. So they don't have attacks here, so I don't need to tap with the giant killer. They don't really have blocks either, because I first straight kill this. So I think I'll sack the canyon. I can't I can't really tap out for culture anymore. I need to hold the palm up slash giant killer now. That I don't have the solitude in hand. Do you want the same mic? I I do, yeah. Okay. Hooray. Does it matter about the color? Uh I I, I don't really care. You can pick. <laughs> I thought you were ordering uh, online. Are you going to the store? No, Amazon. Oh, okay. You're still, you are Amazon. Okay. Yeah, and it'll come today, too. This is why Amazon is <laughs> a beast. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. The guest room. Mm -hmm. How I feel? And I feel mostly better. I have like a little bit of a cough. I think it's just like weather related, honestly, at this point, because I've been sick for for like two and a half weeks now. So I, I still have a cough, and then the weather is still doing the thing where it's just like 30 degrees, 60 degrees. Get another COVID test soon, though. Do you have a favorite era of modern? Might be right now, to be honest. I don't know. I really liked when I was playing, like... I, I did, like, the twin pod era of modern. Um, I kind of want to try to win this without showing them palm. Is that too cute? I just, let's just show them palm. Wait, why are they talking with this? Don't show it. I mean, I'm not that I'm not that close to winning this game if I don't palm here, right? I'm I'm not that close to winning this game. They have a million blockers. Yeah, I think just I think it's too cute to not show it to him. We just have to just kill him here. Consider playing Ranger Captor of Blood Moon because they have drum for colored mana. Well, turning off Nexus is like a priority for me, um, because I'm at such a high life total with the Batter Skull that turning turning off the Nexus is a really high priority for me. In that spot. Yeah, that's true. On the, on the on the flip side, like them knowing about Palm might make them like play around it in this game. What deck do you think is the most forgiving of mistakes but still competitive? Uh, probably burn. <laughs> What's typical for mill? I tend to feel like stone blade decks are pretty bad against mill. This deck might be an exception, but it, you know, it's also one sideboard slot and I think mill is popular enough to warrant the sideboard slot at the moment. I feel like I expect to play against Mill like fairly often. I like the sand a lot, gonna keep. Uh, 
Go, Javier, go. They burn is unforgiving. Well, every deck is unforgiving, right? Like, yeah, like, I, 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 I feel like... I, I do think they burn, like, I agree completely that those decisions of, like, when, that, when you need to be going face versus when you need to be... Um, I really want to... I think I need to get the Sophie here. The question is, do I... Do I solitude their Bob here? Maybe they'll forget this as first strike. I think I let them have a draw. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, like I do think that the pivoting from control to like you know aggro with burn is like those are some of the hardest decisions you can make in modern, but. Um, there, there, there is no deck that is just easy to pilot. No, no deck is not, you know. The it has like no has no nuance. Okay, I really want to draw a land, I guess. So I can exile this, equip the sort of fi uh, fire ice. Missed on the land. So let's just exile the. Excel the Bob, and then hold up the Stoneforge activation slash Palm, I guess. Titan Shift has no nuance. You're just wrong. I, I also like, this is also the kind of the thing that I really dislike this conversation to where we talk about like decks that are easy to play and then people like to, you know, they start to like to trash talk decks that they don't like. Uh, it always feels weird to me because it's just, it's just not true that any deck has no nuance. Thankfully, this is just a 2-2 two -two for now. I think I want to equip onto the champion. Really want to draw a land off this uh, Sophie trigger. There we go. MTGO Premium. Um, I mean, I think I'm supposed to hold up Wear Tear Deflecting Palm to play around the Nexus, killing me. Why no Stoneforge attack? Um, <coughs> I was thinking that if my opponent didn't have Path for the Fervent Champion, then I would want the possibility to jump block against a Hammer. Not that I was necessarily thinking that that would happen, but I did think it could happen. Hmm, this, this is a problem. I guess I'm probably not supposed to attack. The Ornithopter. I sighted up the mall. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I, I know. This is always how it starts, though. I, I, I understand. It always starts with somebody genuinely asking about, like, a deck that's easier to get into. And then it, it always turns into, like, somebody else trash talking, uh, like, often that player. And so, like, when, when, I'm, when I'm talking like this, I'm... I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to people who are like trash talking people looking for easier decks to play or trash talking decks and calling them easy to pilot. Because I, I just usually feels like it comes from a place of like an elitist attitude of like a kind of toxic attitude. And I just don't like that kind of conversation. No attack there. The problem with attacking is my opponent just gets to recur whenever we attack with Afluris. And if they recur the Ingenious Smith here, um, then they're getting value off of it. How relevant are the sword combat damage effects compared to the protection? The protection is not that relevant on swords usually because like they're so mana intensive that your opponents are like usually going to be able to like not care that much about the protection with a smart removal spell. Um, obviously, they, they are somewhat relevant, but I, I would say that the effect that you get off the sword is, is really what you care about more, more so. Could have killed Luris. No, they just chump block. I don't have trample. Okay, really weird that they would fire up the Nexus and not hammer. Okay. Portable holes the champion. I do like drawing a land here. The sword triggers. No, the sword only triggers if it deals combat damage to an opponent. It does not trigger if it deals combat damage to a player. What are we talking about? 
I didn't have trample. They just, they block. What are we talking about? You're good, you're good. Second with the Smith is interesting. I guess they want to recur it with Luris. It's a good attack. Uh, deflecting Palm does not... If you if they put a hammer here, it doesn't give them infect, no. Because it's the, it's the Deflecting Palm doing the damage, not the Nexus. This, is, this has come up recently. So I'm going to put the Cauldron into play, then I'm going to equip the Sophie to this. Now this has Trample, so this is likely to be good. This should be able to kill the Luris. I'd like to draw a land, but um, Deflecting Palm Wear Terror ideally saves us even if we miss. Came up last game with the life linking creature, or was it not life link? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't. What's, what's the question? Okay, so I can kill the hammer, which kills the Luris. I think it's just way better to hold up deflecting palm because even if my opponent has second hammer, the game ends in a draw. As for Sentinel, the revealed card. You could have torn the aid. I know, but then I I lose. But if I tear the aid, then I re I lose to the Nexus on the crackback. If they have you know a way to get a hammer on it, which I I do think they have a second hammer in hand. I don't necessarily think they have another cigar to Zader Paladin, but they can draw one. So I I feel like this is the line. I think I jump block a sentinel here. Or should the the smith? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just, I just realized they left with no mana up, which is so weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, first, I thought they had one mana up, but they didn't. All right, deflecting palms look to be a good addition to the sideboard, huh? <laughs> Did I cut something to add them? <laughs> I mean, of course, right? <laughs> yeah, I cut the Mandariki Gusari because it's like if you're gonna if you're gonna add palms, like cutting like the like the the Mandariki is just for hammer time, so you're making your hammer time matchups. So you can cut that, and I kind of felt like the fourth ending was a bit much because our shadow matchup feels pretty good already. Like every, we've we've started against shadow, and it feels like I have a couple extra cards anyways. And then I cut the third Forge Tinder, which is another card against shadow. Uh, and Murktide, but I, I did think the third Force Shinder was maybe a bit much. But Force is just so good right now. I, I did want to play a lot of them. I put it to to five. Hopefully this moon is good. Bolts to four. They didn't reveal Kahira, so hopefully not Belcher. Uh, yeah, the webcam does look a bit blurry. I don't know. I could try to do this. Could have some blurry makeup on. Can you do that? Can you make yourself look blurry with makeup? You probably can, right? Oops, all spells. Hmm. Deflecting palm, or sorry, battery scope might be able to give me enough life for me to not lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, 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 they're a recent addition. Just teasing you a little bit. Okay, I think we might lose to the small to four. We just went with Moon. No, they they have black mana now. They're not going for it. It's kind of surprising. But they, I mean, maybe they bolt to four. They just have all mana and they don't have a payoff. Okay. Cauldra. So let me make sure that I'm not. So I'm going to attack. I'm going to go up to. 23 effectively because i'm going to fetch uh my opponent is going to get four venge vines four creeping chills that's going to be 16 plus 12 which is 28 
Uh, I can block one of the Vinge Vines, effectively gaining me eight. So yeah, I, I am... I should be good to attack with the Cauldron here, because this, this gives me lethal next turn. Oh, whoops, oops, oops. And I can also... Um, I can also equip the Batter Skull to the Cauldron next turn and do like nine lifelink trample vigilance. Assuming that they do go for it. Although I, I might be dead to Thassa's Oracle. Either way. Do I listen to music while I play? Yeah, I listen to music basically the whole stream. I kind of go crazy. Uh, I, I used to, for the longest time, I listened to no music, but uh, it just really helps keep me focused and uh, I, I kind of can't imagine. <laughs> Doing this stream without music again. Sometimes my headphones die and I have to do it for a little while. Okay, so equip here. This is 9, 9, block 3, take 6, take 2 more. Die exactly. Now, elves keep me focused, energetic, relax, you know. Music. <laughs> yeah, I just think no music is better for the stream overall. Because, like, if you want to listen to music while I watch, you can... Put on what you want, and a lot of people don't like the music on the stream. <coughs> so I want the rips, the wear tears. Prismatic ending does help fight their artifact mana, which is kind of nice. I I might play one blood moon, especially if I'm going to play all these fury or these sorry these wear tears, but I don't think that they're really that good. Um, I think I'm gonna cut them all. Got a Sentinel. Pretty easy. Feast and Famine might be fine. The protection colors are relevant. And we can pressure their hand, especially if we're making them stumble. I think I'll play a Feast and Famine over a Sophie. A second moon. I guess maybe a second moon on the play. Yeah, Palm is good against Belcher. It's not good. I guess they, they are playing Belcher, huh? I, yeah, they, they, I forgot that they have Belcher in their deck. I, should, I shouldn't have forgot. I just wrote a, a guide for Belcher for CFB. <laughs> or for, for Oopsel spells. So, kind of can't believe I forgot that. Yeah, I'll bring in the Palms for game three. All right, go, go, Javier. So nice that Simeon Spirit Guide isn't in the format anymore. Like, you just don't have to worry about, like, them killing you like like here I, I can exile this without worrying about dying I do think I want to exile the talisman this turn just in case they are in Belcher instead Simeon Spirit Guide died for Valky Sins when Simeon Spirit Guide was legal in the format there were four decks that could kill you on turn one Tibble's Trickery, Neobrand, Oopsol Spells, Belcher uh Although Usel Spells was usually the <laughs> the one that was going to kill you the slowest. But uh, yeah, that being said, I, I, I'm of the opinion that uh, Simeon Spirit Guide's ban was warranted. Ooh. If they chump block here, then the Feast and Famine doesn't you know really do anything. So I guess I'm going to play the, the rip. How did Temple's Trickery win turn one? Uh, so it would it would cast an Emrakul on turn one, which is maybe not like literally killing you, but uh, especially in the pre Solitude metagame, was winning the game on turn one. I think you could also you could also hit Omniscience and then cast two Eldrazi, like it, it was theoretically possible to actually kill on turn one, or you know take an extra turn then kill them, which is basically turn one. Uh, they discarded Nature's Claim. Interesting. Maybe I played the Sunbit Canyon here. Okay, so I imagine one of their three cards is Nature's Claim. Lit. And they're going to chump block my... My champ. So let's... Solitude the Dark Amoeba so we can smack them. Um, If you played your land, you could have cast like, Solitude. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. Are they gonna Nature's Claim my sword? They just claimed their rip. Oh, but before this, they could discard something for value. Discards a Vinge Vine. Good play, good play. Draw a card. Sentinel. 
might not be dead dead but if they have the payoff we're probably probably still losing because of the thoracal line because okay, i get to block avenge mine gain five probably I'm, dead, I'm also dead to like the next round of avenge mine attacks too Although they're not just slamming Undercity and former Battle Street Spy, so maybe they don't have it. Hey, I thought two equipping Sentinel because of the tax. I'm 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 dead if they spy if I equip the Sentinel. I think. I need the extra life link. Okay, let's check and make sure that see if they cited out the Thoracal or not. Sometimes they do. Not that it's correct. Okay, there's the Thoracal. Oh, but they don't have. Oh, wait, do they have the? Do they still have the jack o' lanterns to make green mana? They do have jack o' lantern to make green mana to memory's journey back their Thassa's oracle. I'm trying to think if I have any outs. Yes, yeah, so they salvage Titan from the graveyard. Salvage Titan sack the swords. Return four Venge vines. I get to block one, gain five up to fifteen. Can also block another one. So if I draw if I draw rest in peace, it doesn't matter because they get to put a Thassa's Oracle on top of their library. I don't I don't think I have outs chat. Let's see what we draw. Oh, we also get to see if they boarded in Belcher. Or if they have Belchers in their deck right now, and they do not. That's huge. Ragavan? Uh, Ragavan gets blocked, unfortunately, by the Narc Amoeba. It's almost, uh, it's almost good enough, though. Also, they 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 also don't need to play, cast this till end of turn. No attacks. No, they don't die on draw step because they they're gonna memory's journey. I still don't think this does anything. They So they have a Memories Journey that they can shuffle the Thassa's Oracle on the top of their library. And then they, they make the green mana because they have Jack-O-Lantern in their graveyard, which they can exile from their graveyard to make a green mana. Drawn to Rip. Rip still doesn't do it because they, they just get to respond. So I'm pretty sure we're still dead. I don't know what we can draw here. That ain't it. I will I will uh make them do it though. They fucked up. They fucked up. I think. I only see one jack o' lantern in the yard. Oh no no, they sorry, this still works. This still works. Yeah, so they put the oracle on top. Okay. Sorry, I thought they didn't have a. They needed the different mana. Okay, going to game three. So we sold no belchers. So I think I'm not going to bring in the deflecting palms. I do kind of want another mood on the play. Solid two decks out oracle. That doesn't work. Uh, they they the, the trigger still kills you because there's no cards in their library. Why do we miss concede there? Uh, again, they memories journeyed to put the Thassa's Oracle on the top of their library. That's what they draw for turn. They cast Thassa's Oracle. They have no cards in their library. I can't interact with it. They win the game. Is there anything we can draw Sentinel? I couldn't think of anything. It's really hard to interact with. This hand's fine. Slow down their mana acceleration. I think it's good for modern for decks like oops to exist i do think that linear combo decks are a really important thing for modern otherwise like decks like four color omnath are just like the de facto best deck in the format um but like the linear the linear decks tend to keep like decks like four color omnath in check maybe not oops all spells specifically but decks like tron belcher uh titan like and like the variety of them too uh does keep these decks um, from just being like the grindiest all creature removal piles, grindy two for one deck. Um, I I also think these kinds of decks are really 
are really married to like tight to 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 um to uh to modern's identity as a format as well i i, I very much feel like when people think of modern they do think of linear decks that are very um you know very proactive and very comboy and very powerful with nut draws and so I, I i do think that is important for like the them to still be somewhat viable yeah tech tech for mattress cast this monkey real quick Yorion Amulet. Oh, man. The Yorion deck techs are always so tough to, like, wrap your head around sometimes. Because there's always so much going on. I, I tend to think that Yorion... Oh, man. No! I got max punish for playing my champion first, because this actually just kills them if I can cast it. It's, like, it's actually just a kill. I think we need a feast and famine here. Ugh, so frustrating. Draven, think with seven months. Appreciate you. Yeah, I I don't think that Yorion makes a lot of sense in Titan. Like, obviously you have a lot of tutors, but like like Titans, like really, I, in my opinion, thrives on those nut draws, right? And like I I think that reducing those nut draws just doesn't make much sense to me. I should have them dead next turn. Yeah, so I, I think I think that like I, I see a lot of people like choosing between Spike, what do you think is better? Cultivator, Colossus, or Karn. You actually don't need to play either. Like you can just play like some of the older versions that play neither. Um I think that just like the sixty card versions with Karn are best. That being said, if you're going to do this, this seems like a total... I don't see any obvious uh, problems with the deck building. But yeah, the deck, the deck does seem... Like, this is, this is like, uh, definitely how I would build Yorion Karn. Or y Yorion Titan, sorry. Okay, we've been 2-0 so far, all of our matches, right? And lost, lost in round three in all of our leagues today. Which is, you know, pretty good record overall, six and two. Just no trophies yet. But yeah, we have twenty three days left and twenty two trophies to break the all time record. Uh, why Principe holds the record? Yeah. Catch your triumph. Probably playing as Rhinos, right? With no companion. Is this my brew? Yeah. I mean, I've seen other people build decks like this in the past. This is, you know, I guess my take on the archetype. Still main zoo? I sure hope so. Don't get a forest, 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 don't get a forest. Alright, that's fine. Okay, it is not, uh, in fact, a Cascade deck. Blood Moon's probably uh, going to be good, though. Yeah, we're playing three Sword of Fire Ice. Just, like, you're in this spot a lot where you have a Fervent Champion and, like, the best card you could possibly draw is Sword of Fire Ice. So you see chat suggesting, you know, all the bad swords, but just play the best one, I think. Holds the Sentinel. Hopefully this Blood Moon holds on. So Stoneforge Mystic, Sword of Fire Ice, or the best trails probably. Yeah, I just I don't want a big fan of Feast and Famine in the metagame. If things change, I'd be more interested. 
I like it in the sideboard a lot. But I didn't put Yori out in the hand. Drew a castable, I guess. <laughs> hold, Blood Moon, hold. Just our one mana one ones getting the job done. Oh, yeah, they're not playing Yorion. Sorry, I'm just so used to these decks playing Yorion. It is kind of weird to see him not, honestly. Damn it. Although, at least we've got first strike. And this doesn't seem like my opponent got any castable spells, actually, from drawing that forest. Okay, that makes our Solitude castable and actually gives us lethal next turn. Hold. Yeah, yeah, they conceded. Uh, wait, why would you ever concede there? Maybe they have no outs when they go to one. Wait, was, is, my, is my opponent T? <coughs> I think my opponent is Teamer Reclamation. Because they're, they're 60 cards. I don't remember seeing a white source. And they're playing Castle Vantress. So they must actually be Teamer Rec, right? So I'm not that interested in Fury, Prismatic Ending. I want the Feast and Famine. I think I want some Rest in Pieces. Yeah, Rest in Pieces is good against Deluge, Ren and Six, Snapcaster if they're playing it. Yeah, also the same bar. His team returns by Wafu. Could be, yeah. Could could be. Yeah, the the ice thing could go make it make, make it go either way. Yeah, I think maybe we are supposed to infer the team returns deck. So maybe like maybe prismatic ending for like like these solitudes just aren't that good. Prismatic ending at least hits the Renin Six. I think I'll just play one. But maybe Fury is better than Solitude actually in this matchup then. So maybe I, I don't play the Wear Terrors until game three if we see they're on, on Wreck Returns. Because Wear Terrors dead if they're not playing Wreck, I think. Then maybe I play a one Solitude, one Fortune. I'll play a Forge Tender. Then I board out some of my one mana creatures if they have four random I'm on the draw. Ah, man. My one mana creature is too important. It's also like, on the, on the draw against Ren and Six decks, if I have a Ragavan and another one mana creature, I basically always play out the other one mana creature first. So then I can dash and kill the Ren and Six on turn two. Is boss we call him six attack against Belcher? It's it's okay. Um, it's that that's the other option for sure. Is there no room for off color shock? You can play the off color shock. I only have two innings in the main though, but you could play it. <coughs> it's just like a bit worse too with the blood moons in your deck to play the off color shock. What is that in the background of this picture? Kind of looks like an Eldrazi. Does anybody know? We have any Javier's in the chat? <laughs> Base Wizard, think with five months. Appreciate you. All right, no return to your written six. Bug, think with seven months. I think when I fetch a planes here, it kind of like signals that I have Blood Moon a little bit harder. They are there, they do seem like they're playing around with the Gold and think with Twitch Prime, appreciate ya. Just a random reddish pillar. Maybe. I'm gonna cast Blood Moon. They have two basics, so it's not like doing that much, but it does cut them off their double blue. Um, so if they have a counter spell, this probably eats the counter. Cycles the Teamer Trium. Potentially just okay with letting Blood Moon enter. It's an interesting draw. I think I get Sophie here. It's either that or Feast and Famine, but. Favorite cool side for mill matchup. 
how much I, I think I think that mill is a, a somewhat popular deck. I I will expect to play against mill pretty often uh, in the leagues these days. I maybe like one in every ten or fifteen matches I'll expect to play against mill. And I, I tend to find mill to be pretty good against stoneblade decks too, in my experience. This is probably better against mill than most of like the new stoneblade decks I've played in the past, but I just like with that impression of being like kind of soft to Stoneblade, I think that this is a, a good way to build the deck. Uh, Shay with the two months, appreciate you. With only blue, one blue mana up, I'm not too afraid of counter magic here. But I, I'm going to go for the uh, Batter Skull instead of the Equip here. Where's the Blade of Stoneblade? The uh, Swords are the Blades usually. So looks like they've got a bolt for my Stoneforge Mystic. But it also seems like they've got the read that I'm on Batter Skull. Pretty easy to read here, right? Aether goes to the Blood Moon. Well, I have another one, so I'm going to bottom. I haven't seen too many uh, Aether Gusts lately. I tutor the, this with the Mystic. The Sword. The bound guard is Iron Crag, a massive boulder glowing with volcanic heat. It's in the lore. Thank you, Vorthos. Shout out to all the Vorthoses out there. I'm actually friends with some Vorthoses. Some of uh, Madison did all the emotes, and her husband are they they're not that into the they they play the games, but they're they're mostly into the lore and the story, which is something I don't relate with, but it's cute. It definitely slows me down a lot. This Hall of the Storm Giants is also kind of scary. So you have the Blood Moon for it. Alright, getting aggressive. Two, three cards in their hand. Jerusa with the Twitch Prime, appreciate ya. This be for four down to ten. If they have a counter spell for this Batter Skull, I'm just kind of toast, maybe. Javier would be a great draw. I could go Batter Skull, have them get countered. Crypto sword, smack him, kill a shark. Okay, red and six. Three suspicious blue mana up. I think I go for Blood Moon first. Hope they counter it. And then I can go back for Cinder equip. Eats the counter. Then they have they have one card in their hand drawing up to two. I imagine they ping me as part of this attack as well. Then I'm dead to the, the five for next turn as well. Two cards in hand. Delta played for turn. That was probably their draw. Pretty sure I play Ranger Captain. Ranger Captain beats like a removal spell. Where Battle Skull maybe doesn't, although it's probably resilient to any like removal they do actually realistically have. Go go Javier. I've been so impressed by this card. Especially with Ranger Captain 2 in these kind of spots. They have another shark? No! Oh, we're dead. Ah, it's like the only card that kills us here. Game three. I think I'm interested in the second Forge Tinder. Let me just, maybe only play two Rest in Peace. Or maybe I just don't play the ending. They're playing Shark Typhoons. I think that's maybe an indication they're on Wreck. We didn't see a Reclamation, so I'm just going to click Submit here. And not bring in the wear tears. Rin six kills the champion. Yeah, but I think protecting the, making sure the ranger captain can block is is, is more important than like protecting the champion there. Okay, let's keep this. I really need to draw land. Put us both the six. Awesome. It's 
So we can't punish you in hell. I mean, not in this matchup. But yeah. All right, very thankful for no um, heat into Ren and Six. I'm about a bit worried about some counter magic. I think I think I'll play the Ranger Captain here. Okay, now definitely just grab another champion. I'm also pretty happy against my opponent who's Mulligan to you know, just trade one for one a bunch. Three slam sword for high subside? Nah, not against their deck. I think it's way better to play this a little bit more patiently. Although it's not at the end of the world though, because next to me we just get to go sword plus equip. I think they've got a counter spell. I think I'm probably just gonna go Maul this turn. Clip onto the Fervent Champion, probably. Is where we select the Ranger Captain before playing Equip? I think it's just too bad against um, Ice Fang, right? I guess they can, they don't can't block with Ice Fang. They wouldn't have Death Touch. I don't know. I, I but it's it's also really. I think it's just a spew to like lose the creature. It's like you're sacking the Ranger Captain basically to make them discard a card, and if they bolt the champion, then then it's like they just get that value right back. And you know we are pressuring their life total a lot, so like keeping keeping that up, I think is very relevant. All right, thankfully they can't ping me anymore, or ping my champion. It might be on Ice Fang here. Either way, pretty easy. I think this turn to play the sword and then uh, equip for zero, play a Stoneforge Mystic. So if they have Bolt, they can Bolt right now. They have to have a second Steam Bits in the deck, but they probably do. Let's get Sophie, I think, here. Definitely gonna ignore the Ren in this spot. Yeah, they can't really have anything to kill this, right? Okay, so they, they, they also don't have counter spell in their hand. They would have used the counter spell, so uh, I'm gonna cast the Sophie. Give this protection from Archmage's Charm. Has protection from their deck, so. Feeling okay. Yeah, this card's nuts. Flying, protection from blue, protection from black, protection from red, protection from green. Pretty good. Okay, the return uh, Misty instead of Sandbar. They have explosives? They do. It's basically the only way for them to deal with this. If they have explosives plus target removal spell, good beats, I guess. Okay, we can actually play around that by playing Forge Tinder. Oh, no, we can't. Because they just sacked the explosives. What do they have? They can't have anything. Yeah. Okay. Three and over the hump. Dexman doing very well. Nine and one yesterday, seven and two today. I'm not qualified for the Magic Hall of Fame. Uh, I mean, it'll be 10 years since my first Pro Tour and like. I don't know, not not that many years, but I, I don't have the I don't have the uh clout the the achievements to be in the Hall of Fame. We have the Emrakul. Yeah, not yet. Maybe one day, but like uh not anytime soon. 
I would, have, I would have to achieve a lot to be worthy of those hallowed halls. Golly, what a draw. Mill is disgusting, man. Might still be able to pull out a win, but it's going to be tough. I have the Emrakul on the side. I have the Emrakul on the side. I have the Emrakul on the side. Although there is some tension here. I guess I don't bring in Rest in Peace because it, it turns off my Emrakul. Surgical's Blood Moon. Doesn't Surgical Sword of Fire Ice. No respect. I think I killed Crab, it's kinda close. Dude, that was such a nutty draw. I've played with sort of Hearth at Home in the past. I don't think it's very good. Do I have many paper cards? Um I have most of the decks I play online. I I'm missing like I'm missing like a lot of cards for a few different decks. If that, or I'm sorry, a few different like a few cards for a lot of decks. Like if I like I don't I don't own Fervent Champion. Um, I don't own Sunbait Canyon. I don't own Inspiring Vantage. I don't. I might have Ranger Captains. I might not. I don't think I have an Ember Cool. I only have one sort of Fire Ice. So like, but I've got a pretty big modern collection. I just don't have everything. Yeah, I can't bring a rest in peace because it turns off our Emrakul, which is, you know, our most important card. I think I'll play, I think I'll be able four moons to be at 62 cards. If I have oh, my PR, because I have these cards, I, mean, I don't want you guys to send me expensive cards just to have. But most of six. Enjoy it the six months, let's go. Yeah, I, I used to have a pretty big modern and legacy collection like five or six years ago, and then I sold out during some hard, you know, financial times. Alright, Emrakul trigger. Let's play real fast. Dude, Sigil's drawn me two cards already. <laughs> My opponent's like, yeah, you'll just uh you'll just yeah, get closer to milling with all those cards you're drawing. I think I get Sophie. It's kinda close. Do I have any power? No. No. The most expensive cards I had before I sold my collection were like Volcanic Island, Underground Sea. I like I had two C's. Four Tundras, a Volcanic Island. I had some other... I, I had a lot of dual lands. Um, I, had a, I had a lot of dual lands, but... Um, like, maybe a dozen or so. I really... But I also I also sold them... I sold, I, I sold them for more than I bought them for. Like, <laughs> it's, like, so hard to not, but... Obviously, like, you know, they've, they've just continued to increase in price, and I'm sad that I don't have them anymore. How's Javier doing? Really, really good. As maybe you can see here. <laughs> Parts cracked. I, Aspiring Spike, declare Javier to be cracked and modern. I did board in the Feast of Famine, yeah. I think it was better grab the Fire Ice, but... Your line's pretty good, too. Although I wanted to play the moon, the moon didn't get drowned that turn, and they could have had like fatal push for Javier that 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 turn too. 
Why is this game heavier? Because this is the um, 2018 World Champion Javier Dominguez. Uh, this is his uh, World Champion card. It says it, it says in the flavor text down there, 2018 World Champion Javier Dominguez. Kind of like the um, oh, what's the I can't remember Apollo's card's name. Elite spell spellbinder spellcaster, spell something. Why I went through Sophie is just so good with Fervid Champion, and it's more powerful than all the other swords by like a whole tier, really. Spellbinder, thank you. <laughs> okay, got a mulligan the hand with Dimmer, cool. Yeah, Mill doesn't usually play Mesmeric Orb anymore. Who knew all that Mill needed to be competitive was better Mill cards? It's tough. So I, I kind of don't want to. I guess I, could, I guess I should keep the prismatic because I, I need, I need the second planes, and I am worried about archive trap. Like it is nice to just like not have to fetch, but I think getting that second planes is better. And again, I've got the Emrakul in the deck, so so like I don't need to be as worried about archive trap. No trap. Opponent does not care about my Sentinel. Okay, this does excel my... Soul Guide Lantern is good against the Dimmercool, though. So ideally, we can draw a Prismatic Ending for the Lantern before my opponent mills over my Emrakul. Although my opponent just milled two of my three Prismatic Endings. So I guess... No Emrakul. I have to do this the old-fashioned way. Although they are down a couple cards, right? I could Fury this crab. I have other things to do with my three mana, and my opponent's like, you know, they they have two islands in play, so the Bloodman's not going to be as good. Dude, my opponent does not care. <laughs> they do not care about Sentinel. Sentinel, think with five months. We shoot you, buddy. They even have the basic swamp. Yeah, yeah, like not paying for Sentinel does make some sense because it, it does deck me faster, but I don't know, man. They're paying a mana for sur they're paying a mana for surgical and letting me draw. But why would they surgical moon here? They're pretty resilient to moon. Weird. Lurus into the hand for my opponent. Alright, I guess I'll eat a trap if they have one. Won't feel great about it. They didn't have one earlier. Oh, I guess I should have equipped first. Oh, I was supposed to equip first, because now if they have push... Oh, uh, yeah, I, I could have equipped to the Sentinel. It's playing a little too fast. There's Lurus, two mystery cards. I mean, their Lurus is not so good next turn, at least. What is Surgical Not Moon? I mean, literally anything else, I think. Still letting me draw, geez. Tosh's me for a bunch of cards. I've got 20 cards left in my library. Surgical, my fervent champion. Their last card is Lurus. They can't play Lurus. They can if they have any black source, right? Okay, Cauldra is castable in two turns, and I can go equip, 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 and kill them. They can now play Lurus. Plays a crab too. It's a good draw for them. Or they can play Lantern. Creature, creature, creature. Do I have fetchables in my deck? I think I'm on three Sacred Foundry, four planes. Leave the planes for the Field of Ruin. Yeah, Emrakul's been exiled. 16 cards in my library, opponent's top decking. Replay Lantern. 
probably draw a card here. Field of Ruin. No attacks with Luris. Play around Ragavan. I don't really like that play. Okay, I don't need to float mana. It's my draw step. So last card trap. So last card's trap. They put me to one card in my library. Echoing truth? No! Come on, dude. Opponent with the freaking rips. Do they have any basics left in their deck, actually? They might not. So I'm out of basics as well. But I can go Ragavan equip equip on top of all my lands. Kill their Luris. Just play Sentinel equip equip. I think it's better to kill Luris because they get to recur the Lantern, right? Let me think. Because I can play Sentinel Equip Equip and this doesn't deal damage. They just get an extra card from the Luris. They can also replay the Crab if I yeah, kill the Crab. Double Sophie better. Well, I can't. I think it's better to, to do this. Although, now it's. Yeah, now it's probably better to do this. Honest question, why don't we talk about Bruno? Who the fuck is Bruno? <laughs> what are we talking about? Twelve cards of the library, dead to most spell spells. We're in the middle of like this really tense game. Chat's like, let's talk about this Bruno guy. Who is Bruno? Phone says GG's. Please don't be offensive. Okay, awesome. <laughs> This is like something else, some kind of inside joke. All right, prediction for trophy 42, huh? Or 51, 52, 52. Playing against Kihira the Orphan Guard, so my triple solitude is not likely to be very good. I think I have to keep this on the draw on six cards against Kihira. We'll see if they're Belcher or not. If they are Belcher, we did add the Deflecting Palms. I, so I trophied yesterday with this deck, and then I played one more league, and I lost playing for the trophy against Belcher. Um, okay, it's not Belcher. Control variant, most likely. Um, I kind of don't hate leading on Sentinel here. Misty kind of makes... Like, the, if they're playing, like, a Ren and Six deck, which it's kind of hard to tell... But if they're playing a Ren and Six deck, it's like way better for the to go Sentinel. They go Ren and Six, we draw a card, and then Ragavan kill Ren and Six. It's probably just like Blue White or Just Guy, which is I think probably a, a good matchup. We'll see, I guess. If they chalice me, it's worse. Okay, I do have a couple prismatic endings. Blood Moons are looking fine too. Uh, I'll probably grab Cauldron with this first. Stoneforge, right? Yeah, Blood Moon also might just be three mana to win the game. I have considered Embercleave. It's my opinion that Modern is not a format for Embercleave. Or Embercleave very good in Standard because it's all about attacking, blocking with big creatures and stuff. But I think in like this very removal heavy combat where there's like not that much blocking, not that much blocking happens in modern. Cleave is not that good. It's also true if you tutor Ember Cleave with Stoneforge Mystic, your opponent like can can play around it really easily. So it's like kind of hard to blow them out that way too. That's just my impression. I, I could you know maybe be wrong, but uh, not sure. I think I like not. I think I like playing the Cauldron here. Maybe this incentivizes them to not get a basic, right? Maybe we should play Mountain for that purpose, too. 
Then you get a basic. I also think they, they have a counter spell, so like activating Stoneforge Mystic on a turn where we think my opponent has a counter spell also, of course, makes a lot of sense. They have Charm to steal the token. Um, I can Solitude the token. I don't think I want to do so very aggressively, though. Since I would, you know, maybe like Stoneforge Mystic is one of the best cards in my hand. My opponent's, you know, not that likely to deal tons and tons of damage to me. Don't let me draw a lot of cards off this Jace. Joseph was just right. Thank you, buddy. If they have Solitude. Um, we're in bad shape. I'm thinking we could maybe get Maul of the Skyclaves, put the Maul and the Sentinel, kill the Jace. But again, if they just have... Oh, we drew Maul naturally. That is something, huh? Please don't base, baselessly accuse my opponent of sniping, chat. I don't know why we're assuming they're sniping. But please, please don't uh, accuse uh, someone. Mr. Sari, thank you for the raid. Hope you're having a good day, buddy. Why do they get basic? I, I, you always get a basic at this spot. It's, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. This is like, you, you get basics pretty often on turns three, four with blue white control. It's re really not an uncommon play at, at that spot at all. Like, why would you shock there? There's no reason to shock there. Your mana's perfect. <laughs> I think we get feasted famine over batter skill, kind of close. Hey Yama, good to see you, buddy. Yeah, I know we can't pitch Solitude this turn, but we also don't really need to, right? Yeah, yeah, they have Trio Mystic Gate. It's not like they were fetching basics, like, from turn one. But even if they were, like, I posted this list on Twitter, you know. <laughs> I think I'm going to go for the Blood Moon plus Sophie or Stoneforge activation this turn. Is it possible to play the deck with only one Sophie? I think I think it's optimal to play three, but you can, you, can, you know... Not if you don't want to buy more. This card's really expensive, right? I I have one. I can't remember how much it is. They have Hardcast Solitude. It's fine. Yeah, I guess I should have attacked first. Yeah. Oops. Did I not play the Warp World Pile yet? You just You just missed it. <laughs> nah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Ending the Blood Moon. Kind of surprised they care that much about it, but it's fine. How do you feel about a double block on Solitude? It's probably pretty good. Getting pretty close to equipping the Batter Skull too. Or so the uh, Cauldra. They have two cards in their hands. It's kind of hard for them to interact with my sort of Fire and Ice this turn, right? Like they need they need Solitude White card. They like they can't prismatic ending here, of course. The Chalice is getting to us. We do have two main deck prismatic endings as answers here. Lamp for six months. Appreciate you, buddy. Are they really gonna evoke? They would evoke. They would have done that pre-combat unless they were thinking about maybe getting me on the mall equip too. I guess I can pitch the sentinel if I want, but I'm pretty close to just equipping. Yeah, we beat the mill deck. It was a very close match. Why not Fervent Champion equip sword to it? Mm. Born a born a once a Twitch chatter, always a Twitch chatter. But there, I, I know you can't see it because you were born with Chalice of the Void blindness. It's a hereditary condition. Uh, but the Chalice of the Void counters one mana spells, and Javier made the fatal flaw of having his Invitational card be one mana. Yeah, you're good. You're good. <laughs> But that's also the reason why I'm not playing any of these one drops. <laughs> if 
you think you might be suffering from Chalice the Void Blindness too, you might be eligible for compensation. <laughs> So they can bounce the sword, but they can't bounce the mystic. If they bounce the sword, I can play and equip, but I can't equip them all. I could cauldre the token in order to get my sword trigger if I want it. They bounce the maul? What? Maul has an ETB trigger. What are we doing here? Bouncing maul is actively good for me. Yeah, one yeah, one man away from the reequip of Caldra. Oh no, my headphones are dying. Need that energy. I think I think we kill the Teferi. It's kinda close. Alright, well, pass back. Three cards in hand. Spreading seas number two. Once we went trophy race, well, they said YouTube videos, not Twitch streams, so <laughs> hard to see it, tell how invested they really are. Okay, ending the Stoneforge Mystic. They're attacker blocking. Well, the, the Maul gives my Stoneforge Mystic flying. <coughs> okay, Prismatic Ending is still the best draw, I think. You play another Chalice to stop that from being. And out a third spreading seas. So so if I so if I blood moon, it's really just not gonna be that good for me. I don't really want to exile the token, but maybe I should. Yeah, I think I think there's a chance that I lose to the cauldron aggression. So I think I'll just I'll, I'll exile, even though I'm only one man away from equipping. I feel pretty ahead. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I don't feel that ahead. We have two castable spells. We have three cards in hand. We have, you know, a bunch of equipments in play. I feel fine in this spot. Let's go for the Sophie equip. And then not going to equip the Maul. I'd rather play the Ranger Captain. See if my opponent has, like, a Solitude here. Okay, I'll just, I'll just play second Solitude here, I guess. Got two cards up. Yeah, long game one, huh? Tense game one. Champion's really good. I think it's the I think it's the best one drop in this deck. We have Sentinel and Ragavan in this deck. I think this is Verdict. We'll see. Maybe a Planeswalker. Solitude number three or number four, three. Thin the deck a bit. <laughs> I want to equip the uh, sword so they can't bounce this with Teferi or Teferi or Jace. That option is obviously a mall equipping, right? For main efficiency. Is your prismatic ending? Yeah, their draws have been really good. I'm out of castable spells too. Yeah, prismatic ending waiting room. I know. I think I'm fetching. Dash for the lulls. While we're playing for a trophy, let's maybe not take the lines that are for the lulls, huh? <laughs> do I cast that? I think I do. I think my opponent will counter if they have it. I do have a basic planes here. I just keep my opponent off like Archmage's Charm and stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, eating counter spell there is very good. Do we play their new red man land? I have a uh, Sunbait Canyon as my utility lands in this deck. Opponent's also forgetting about Kahira, which is good. <laughs> okay, we're gonna lose game one, chat. 
Okay, they they are fighting so hard over these blood moons. Like if they, <laughs> oh man. I didn't understand that. So shut up, phone. You know you can't. I can't. I couldn't figure out how to disable the voice assistant. It just pops up all the time. Yeah, we need cavern of souls, huh? I guess we would need human here. I'm gonna put a card on bottom, one on top. Yeah, prismatic ending does just it just it, if it res, uh, prismatic a resolve prismatic ending I should say does kind of just end the game. Instead, we drew. We have a full house of ragavans or S <laughs> of Javier's over ragavan or sentinels. I mean, I probably shouldn't show my opponent how good Chalice is, although they could they could probably guess here. They could probably guess. Um, okay, so I... Oh, a little lag. Bring in the Feast and Famine. Um, Wear Tear is a card that's coming in. It's better than Prismatic Ending. We might play some Prismatic Endings, too. Well, Fury over Solitude, probably. Maybe like a 2-2 split. Seems pretty good. Want the four blood moons on the play, maybe less on the draw. I think three wear tears is probably a good number of answers. I might want like the first ending too. The thing is, like, that's all it really answers. And we're also on the play, so like Chalice is worse on the play. So maybe on the draw we bring in the first ending over the fourth moon. This is probably fine. Okay. Also, my opponent's clock is like 14 minutes, right? So if we win this game too, then uh they're going to be crushed for time game three, probably. No, I think bringing an ending is overcorrecting. Like, Chalice is not even... Like, we have 12 one-drops, which, like, Chalice is, like, good against a deck with 12 one-drops. But it's not like we're, you know... It's not like we just fold to Chalice like some decks do. Like, like and, and also, like, we're on the play as well. So, like, I, mean, I could just put back the wear tear, play both of my one-drops before my opponent has the opportunity to get Chalice down. Need to draw land too. I'm gonna play Misty Gate on turn one. Chalice me, let me draw a card. Oh, they have double Misty Gate. They did keep on the back of Chalice. So I get to draw a card. Two looks at a land. Missed, in fact, drew a freaking one drop. No, come on, not like this. Ugh. Okay, we put it to keep double mystigate. Let's see how uh, this plays out. Found a land that taps for mana. It's a spreading seas. It's a fairy. Let me draw another card. There's a land. Okay. So they probably bounce the sentinel. And then I can sort of fire ice, equip. They might have solitude, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, okay. We drew the lens. We drew the lens, chat. Everybody can stop panicking. If they don't have solitude here, we're pretty good. If they had solitude, they should have already used it. Because now I get to gain extra life. Kind of an easy mistake to make for a control player, though. Let's go. Let's go. Lands are coming now. White on Moon, because this is better, in my opinion. Moon's just their whole deck off. I, I, I just, I think that this sword, this play, this play ended up working out really well. Uh, I think this was a good line, huh? If you disagree, that's fine. I feel like if we moon, I, I should probably moon this turn because it is getting worse and worse. But in the next turn, I can go Ranger Captain. Plus wear tear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then like they'll they'll counter the Ranger Captain, not the Wear Tear. Slamming Moon there. Maybe yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't think Slamming Moon there was terrible. I feel like playing the fire ice was better. Um They don't have a counter spell, that's big. Fetch planes. I don't think we need to. We already have two white sources. 
I don't I, I don't see a turn where we're gonna need three white sources because this turn we're going Ranger Captain plus Wear Tear or Ranger Captain plus Equip. Probably Wear Tear because they can't counter it. Oh yeah, spreading seas. Yeah, spreading seas is a reason to fetch the planes there. Good point. Probably getting solituded here. So we need to fade that second chalice, I guess. I consider popping the ranger. No, I think playing around force is worse than just gaining three life. I think force is really unlikely. Because they didn't force the Blood Moon, they didn't force the Sword, and uh, like gain, like you get to gain three life here every single time, which is, I think, higher upside. So I probably could have another Solitude here, pretty easy. Do you think I'm supposed to go Sentinel, Sentinel, Champ, Equip, oh, whoops. here and I could move the sword over to a sentinel if they do have another solitude or I could play a second sword of fire ice that might actually be better yeah I kind of like this so I could just double equip next turn I also play Ranger Captain and Equip Equip on the Javier. Is there a reason not to play a second sword before combat? Um, mostly counter magic, right? My opponent's got two blue up. And they're like pretty likely to deal with the Javier, so I get to do to play like this and have them not deal with it. I did have the counter spell. And I get to equip here. Which is very likely to connect. And I'm probably not supposed to cast this Ragavan since Equip before casting Ranger. Well I was gonna get fervent oh I was gonna get fervent champion off of Ranger to just equip the swords onto. For zero mana. Um yeah, I I I don't I wanna play around Verdict but not casting Ragavan. We do get to draw at least a card off Verdict if they have it here. Chalice on one, okay. <coughs> yeah, so this was this was uh worse for our Ragavan for sure. I got two cards in hand. Yeah, that you cannot dash Ragavan through Chalice. And plays a Mystic Gate, continues to forget about Kahira, I think. Move the second sword over to the second sentinel, I think, to which likely just eats a chump block, but that's fine. But it will it will eat a chump block. And I notably do not move the other sword over, otherwise the, the sentinel dies here. They didn't have verdict last turn. I don't think they they can obviously top deck, but didn't have it last turn. Tense game. It's a fairy of the time raveler, so they're gonna pay they're gonna let me draw off the five mana sentinel. Oh, they let me draw off both. That's gotta be a mistake. Bounces Blood Moon is also odd here. I would have bounced these the Sentinel. No! Fra oh Fracture Gus kills the it kills the chalice. Okay, Fracture Gus kills the Chalice. Sorry, I should. So I have three, three plus six, nine mana. So I can go Stoneforge, Sword, Champion, Blood Moon. Seems pretty good. Notably, th third Sword of Fire and Ice, pretty relevant here. Yeah, the Sophie's. I feel like I feel like we've done a good job proving why three Sophie's is good today. Why main phase the Gus? I don't know. You tell me, man. <laughs> That's what it says in the script, I guess. <coughs> <coughs> I 
It's not dashing. This is better. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't hit them with the sword this turn. No reason to play a raggy boy. I, this this line is way better than playing raggy man. We didn't have the mana to play the raggy man this turn, right? Okay, anything on the draw? I want to trim a moon for one ending. I think four answers to chalice is like about the maximum you could really afford to do. Yeah, that frac they might slide out the fracturing gust because it killed the chalice. I don't know. How much time do they have there in clock? I think like eight minutes. Which is enough to finish a match, but they have to play fast. Yeah, on the draw, I think you definitely want the fourth answer to Chalice. <coughs> have we got anyone with Deflective Bomb? Yeah, we won uh, our first match this league uh, against Hammer. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, keep this. Turn two chalice in the play is rough. We may get to draw a card off Sentinel. I'm gonna play the Sentinel on turn one. Yeah, opponent has a little bit less than eight minutes on the clock. They that is enough time to finish the match for sure, but they, they are gonna have to play quickly. I will concede if I'm zero percent to win, as I always do. Um but if I feel like I am not zero percent, I will not concede. They can't have Snapcaster because they have Kahira, so we don't need to like worry about them blocking here. Man, us for Sentinel is just so good. <coughs> so if they have Charm to steal, they're gonna want to do it pre-combat so they can block. Let me get to draw a card. They steal the uh, Fervent Champion, not the Sentinel, which I wasn't necessarily expecting them to do, but I mean, like we've shown, like Ch Champion is just so good in the stack. So I can grab Cauldre here. I kind of like Cauldre to not be weak to Verdict. I also have a second Stone Fortune Mistake if I want to get, you know, a more like specialized equipment here. Feeling pretty good about her spot. Sentinel's been a three for one so far. Obviously could still lose though. Two mana. Pending Stone Forge, yeah, really. This feels like not it, I don't know what to say. And they let me draw a card with Sentinel again. So now I can go Javier plus Sword. Let's take another. Let me get Sacred Foundry. It's kind of close. They might let the sword resolve. I guess I shouldn't have shocked first. Sorry. They might let the sword resolve because they don't think I could equip this turn. I might counter this instead. Rest in peace, sweet prince. Yeah, Sinnoh's nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They also like they let us draw instead of countering there, which doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't you pay? <coughs> but I might have verdict. They haven't cast a verdict this match, I think. There we go. So I'm probably slamming Batter Skull here. It's kind of close. We'll see what we draw, I guess. Javier would be nuts. Could be Batter Skull plus, or Sophie plus, Stoneforge plus Sword. I think I'll just play this, the Batter Skull. That'll be at 12 life. Point a little less than six minutes. Yeah, they might just be trying to play quickly because their clock's low. They're making some mistakes. They play Mystic Gate for turn. They pass. Sentinels, the draw step. I think I like the meeting with the equip here. Yeah, I agree that Solitude's likely. I get to gain 6 up to 18. I get to play Stoneforge Mystic Sentinel here. Could also Sentinel plus Equip. I think I'd rather get both creatures down, especially because I've got the Cauldron in my hand. And then we're probably going to get sort of Feast and Famine here. Maybe not. Maybe Maul. Mm, let's get the Maul. 
Consider Paladin. I don't think Paladin's good in the stack. We don't. We can't like ever get Metalcraft really, or it's not reliable at the very least. This is like run Sophie. <laughs> yeah, we got a, a few. Balance of Stoneforge Mystic. Interesting. One card in hand. So if that card is Charm, they can answer the. The Sentinel now by get the draw card, but now they can't answer it, so let's just put them all in the Sentinel. Attack them, and then I think I kill Solitude over to Fairy. I'm not hundred percent sure. Seems fine. Alright, let me draw a card. Yep. We're going to let us draw four cards off the of Sentinel. Yeah, it's, that's where you're going to bow. I think I attack first to play around Verdict. I think we're getting there, chat. I'm not I'm not trying to count my chickens before they they hatch or anything, but kind of feels like they're about to hatch. What can I say? Yeah, I think the advantage bar probably favors us a little bit here. I'd have to check I'd have to check the live advantage bar. No concession. Third Sophie. Champ. Quip. Ah, Fracture Gust! I totally forgot about Fracture Gust! Okay, I'll save. I'll leave up the batter skull bounce. I totally forgot about fracturing gust. They conceded. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot about fracturing gust. Oh my gosh. All right, trophy fifty-two. Let's go. <laughs> Burnt taco ready with the freaking deck deck. All right, some of these chests real quick though. Trophy fifty-two. We are now 20 trophies away from tying the all-time trophy record. We have 23 days left to do it. But we're going to break it. We want 21 more trophies. Open to Mystic. Open to uh, Merfolk God 2. Although I prefer the Seb McKinnon art, personally. Yeah, two trophies with this deck in two days.